WBUR Podcasts, Boston. I'm Carrie Young, in for Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. It's time for another feature from our friends from the WBUR newsroom as Team Common works on some longer-term projects. Earlier this year, The Common spoke with senior climate and environment reporter Miriam Wasser about a series of stories that she wrote on third-party energy suppliers who promise consumers cleaner, cheaper electricity using kind of deceptive marketing tactics. Today, we're going to revisit the second part of that series, which explains how those 100 percent renewable energy plans advertised by competitive suppliers are not all they're cracked up to be. I was looking through Instagram the other day when this ad popped up. You. Yes, you. Stop scrolling and take a few minutes to help save the planet. I care about the planet, so I kept watching. The ad told me all I have to do is sign up to get my electricity from a company called Inspire Clean Energy. You get access to 100% gleaming, glistening, sparkling clean energy for your home. In Massachusetts, residents can choose to buy electricity from a private company instead of their utility. These companies are called competitive suppliers, and I've been reporting on them recently, so I wasn't entirely surprised to get this ad. But watching it made me wonder, if I sign up for one of these plans, will my toaster really be powered entirely by the sun and wind? I called Jennifer Bosco. She's a senior staff attorney with the National Consumer Law Center. The supply companies, they're not like literally bringing, you know, solar power to your home. But you wouldn't necessarily know that from the marketing materials. To understand why you don't magically get green electrons coming into your home, it's helpful to picture the electric grid as a big lake. The lake is fed by all different kinds of streams, which are power generators, like gas plants and wind farms. Once the water in these streams enters the lake, all of the electrons mix together. When you turn on your light, you're drawing water from this mix. Okay, so if I enroll in one of these plans, my home isn't totally powered by renewables. But am I actually even buying 100% renewable power? The answer is, it depends. But in a lot of cases, probably not. And the reason has to do with how the renewable energy market works. To help address climate change, Massachusetts has mandated that all electric suppliers buy a certain amount of their power every year from regional renewable energy sources. The goal is to ensure that the New England grid is powered by more renewable energy over time. The state tracks these purchases through something called renewable energy credits. Think of them like a receipt. We are tracking everything that any supplier is doing in compliance with our programs. So everything that's required. We don't necessarily know what they are doing on top of that. Elizabeth Mahoney is the head of the Department of Energy Resources, which oversees this system. She says that right now, suppliers need to buy 22 percent of their electricity from renewables generated in the Northeast. So credits from a wind farm in Maine count. Credits from a wind farm in Iowa do not. But many companies that go above and beyond that 22 percent minimum look to renewables from places like Iowa because they're cheaper. Clean energy from outside New England isn't necessarily bad, Mahoney says. But as a consumer, you should know that the state can't verify or track any of these purchases. We don't know what they're buying. And they are not doing a sufficient job, or really, for the most part, any kind of job, of disclosing what they've purchased. And there's another wrinkle. While some companies that offer 100% renewable plans buy actual renewable electricity on the market, other companies are just buying extra renewable energy credits. They then offset the fossil fuel or nuclear electricity they buy with those credits. It's a practice that Bosco of the National Consumer Law Center calls greenwashing. Unfortunately, I think it's really preying on consumers who are legitimately concerned about the environment and, and want to do something to help address climate change. Not everyone agrees. Calling it greenwashing, I think, is a bit productive. Frank Kaliva is a spokesperson for the Retail Energy Supply Association, an industry group for competitive energy sellers. He says it's not cheating to buy offsets, even if they don't support renewables in exactly the same way. But I can at least be confident that I've done some part to support an environmental benefit. 
But many consumer advocates say it's not supporting an environmental benefit. Liz Anderson is the deputy chief of the Energy and Telecommunications Division at the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office. She says that when a supplier buys credits from a wind farm in Iowa, or even the electricity from that wind farm, it does nothing to support renewables in New England. That wind farm is not helping us reach our climate goals and reduce the emissions on the ISO New England grid, which is what we need to be doing. So where does this leave us? It kind of comes down to where you want to put your dollars. Here's Elizabeth Mahoney with the Department of Energy Resources again. People who are concerned enough to purchase extra clean energy, I got to assume that customers really want to be supporting clean energy that impacts their lives directly, that impacts their air. So if you're in the market for one of these plans, and especially if you're willing to spend a little extra money to buy renewables, it might be worth figuring out where exactly the power is coming from. For 90.9 WBUR, I'm Miriam Wasser. Thanks to Miriam for that story. And you can find tips for how to avoid competitive energy suppliers that charge higher prices at WBUR.org. And that's all for today. We'll be back with our regular show tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm Carrie Young. I'll see you later.